Hey guys, today I added HD zombies to Minecraft. Stick around to figure out how you can add them to your world and how I did it. So if you want to use these in your world, you can just go to the link in the description. There will be a resource pack and a data pack. You throw the resource pack into your resource packs folder and you equip it just like this. And then you throw the data pack into the world you want and type slash reload. And when you do that, the zombies in your world will still be normal, but if you want to spawn a custom HD zombie, type slash function zanim colon spawn, and it will spawn a custom zombie for you, and he'll start walking around just like this. Uh, some things to note is the texture is HD, just for the sake of calling it an HD zombie, uh, but if you want to use the normal textured zombie, you can't really. Uh, it was designed for the HD I have a way to make the normal texture, but it's something I'll have, I will have to export pretty much. Uh, but anyways, this is just a cool proof of concept. It uses the OBJ MC shader by Godlander. It's not perfect, uh, as you can see. It sometimes will bug out a little bit, uh, but it also includes hurt uh, tints, which is also a nice touch. Uh, there's a walking, just like this, and a idle animation, but he's not going to be idle because of all these villagers. There's also a death animation, which looks like this, where they fall over, and after about a second or two, they disappear. You, now, the way that this resource pack works is it actually doesn't require too many commands to handle this. The animation of the zombie is all handled by the resource pack that uses a shader, and it's using OBJMC, as I said before, by Godlander. And let's just get into kind of the overview of how it works. So if you didn't know already, OBJMC is a program that basically converts a Blender 3D model into a 3D model and texture that can be used by a shader to create the 3D model that you created in Blender in the game. And it's a core shader, so you don't have to have fabulous settings on. You can use graphics fast and it still works just fine uh, because it is in the core shaders. And so kind of the way that I did this is I made the 3D model inside Blender and I have different texture nodes here, but it has to export with a certain node. So if I go into here, I can make it a normal zombie just by switching this channel right here. Now it's just a normal zombie. Uh, so I made it inside Blender just like this. Then I animated it using Blender's animation techniques. Then I rendered it with a lower amount of frames. So each animation is actually only six frames. And then I used OBJMC to convert it. The link to OBJMC will be in the description, but it's basically this little window where you pick your OBJs you want to convert. In the case of an animation, you'll have multiple. Then you select the texture of the uh, thing that it uses. And then you play around with different things such as color behavior. The way it works is it uses a potion, which can have various different colors to control the animation. So depending on what color it is, it'll be at a different frame. Of course, if you select autoplay, then it will just always be playing, uh, which is the case for the walking and idle animations. But if you select TTT, then it will be able to pause and play using commands in game. And there's various different settings you have to do here, uh, such as auto rotate, yaw for zombies so that they turn with the head. Now inside the actual game, how I, made it work was I wrote a data pack that is very simple. So this data pack just has a couple of functions inside the tick function. We run something as all zombies. Uh, and then inside these state function, we basically check what state is it on? Is it dying or is it immovable? And if it is movable, then we calculate if it is moving and like what, whether or not it is moving by grabbing the position it's at minus the previous position, like that we checked the previous tick and just figuring out if either of those are positive. And if either of those are positive, then it is moving and switch the custom model data of the potion. So instead of having a potion that is one 3D model, we use another. And luckily with OBJMC, since the model is the same, we, can, we don't have to like duplicate the model and just have giant file sizes. You just have to change the texture. So we switch what model we want, depending on whether it is moving or idle. And then if it, in counters some kind of hurt time, so you hit it, then it will switch to another model, which is a red tinted version of the original model with a different texture that's tinted red. Uh, and it will change that depending on if it is a walking or stationary. 
And then finally, if the health drops below a certain point, which I specified the zombies to have a thousand HP, but then they only have 20 HP that is actually usable. So when they go below 980, they have effectively died. So then when they die, it just changes the 3D model to the red tinted death animation. And it uses the stuff on the GitHub to start it at the correct frame. And then it just plays the animation. And while the animation is playing, uh, once it reaches a certain point, it removes the tint. And then once it reaches another point, it pauses the animation. And once it reaches another point, it kills the zombie by teleporting it into the void. Uh, so yeah, that is everything. That is how it works. That is how to use it. Uh, if you want to see a full tutorial on how to use OBJMC, I will be making that soon. It's just taking me a little bit of time to kind of organize my thoughts on it and make it very detailed. So if you want to see it, subscribe and uh, it should be coming up soon. Just a heads up, I wanted to leave my outro uh, as kind of a dedication to somebody in the community that passed away recently. If the uh, people, if their relatives don't want it, then let me know, I can cut it out. Uh, but I just wanted to leave a little dedication because they made a lot of things that I use and still will use in the future, including my syntax highlighter, as well as uh, a lot of the tools on my website are powered by uh, some of the things they did and their contributions. Uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.